Hey there everyone, Curtis and Rebecca Wolfinger of Millspec Manufacturing here today with Practical Machinists. Contrary to popular belief, you don't need to take on a massive amount of debt to start a machine shop. We took a unique approach that allowed us to cash flow our business. That's why on today's episode of Becoming a Practical Machinist, we're going to break down exactly how we spent under $40,000 to start a machine shop. Let's get locked and loaded. After witnessing several companies slow down or completely shut down during the pandemic, we knew if we wanted to own a business, we needed to do it so we had very little overhead expenses. That way, if work slowed down for us, we would be well insulated. The dream for our company was to purchase CNC machines and have a job shop. However, I didn't have the funds to purchase a machine outright, nor was I willing to finance a new CNC machine with a large monthly payment. So how would you be a business in the manufacturing in industry without a CNC machine? By programming. Mm -hmm. The investment to kickstart the business would be small with very little overhead expenses, and I can continue working full-time at another company at the same time. We decided to start Millspec Manufacturing as a remote CAD CAM programming company. So first, we built the framework of our company. To become a legal business, we filed our LLC in North Carolina for only $125. Now, after we received our EIN from the IRS website, we opened our company bank account with QuickBooks. Now, this allowed us to create estimates, invoices, manage money, and also pay our vendors for only $30 a month. Next, we built our website and created professional email addresses through Wix. This is a monthly fee of $15. Our next purchases were equipment and software for programming. I decided to buy a yearly subscription to Autodesk Fusion 360 with the machining extension. For only $1,938, Fusion 360 provided me with both CAD and CAM software a library of post processors, and a huge selection of machines for simulations. But to run Fusion 360 efficiently, I need a laptop with at least 16 gigs of RAM, a solid state hard drive, and a good processor. I purchased a MSI GL75 gaming laptop for $700 at Target during one of their Christmas sales. If you're also in the market for a computer with a capacity for programming, check out gaming laptops. They're incredible for programming. Now, the total investment to our company was only $2,808, with a monthly overhead of just $60 a month. Guys, that is so low for our company. Now, we quickly fell into the niche of programming DoD and aerospace parts for countries all over the country. And within a few months, we were actually ready to buy our first CNC machine. I found a 1998 Haas VF4 with an automatic power changer on Facebook Marketplace for only $10,000. I love the idea of the machine having the capability to grow with our shop for such an affordable price. Mm -hmm. I flew to Tennessee to check out the machine while it was under power. The seller had already made several updates as in stainless steel weight covers, new drive servos, upgraded the vector drive, an LCD screen, upgraded the floppy emulator, also put in 24 volt high intensity work lights, and had a shop floor automation USB connect system. The only issue the machine had was it could not receive programs. All programs had to be hand-coded into the control unit itself. It could be as simple fix as just replacing the RS-232 cable, or it could cost up to $5,000 by replacing the processor, video, and MoCom boards. Now, a comparable machine would be upwards of $100,000. So for us, the investment to fix these things was very much worth it. So I purchased the machine and scheduled to have the machine transported from Tennessee to North Carolina. I hired a rigging company in Tennessee to load the machine onto the trailer for $1,200. The second company would deliver the machine to North Carolina for $2,250. Now, there is a learning curve jumping from a machinist to an entrepreneur. For me, the hard lessons really started at this point. After delivery, I received my invoice from the second moving company and was surprised to see that they charged me $4,300 instead of the quoted $2,250. The invoice included $200 for the fuel surcharge on top of the $2,250 for the transport from Tennessee to North Carolina, but they also included $1,850 just for rigging. I had a text message where I specifically asked them to confirm the quote of 2250 included both transportation and rigging. In the text, they said yes, but when I tried to get them to honor this agreement and amend the invoice, mm -hmm. they refused. 
So in the future, I will always ask for an itemized estimate to prevent this from happening again. And you should as yeah, well. You guys definitely need to do it too. Yeah. Now our next headache came when it was time to connect the machine to electricity. Our shop only had single phase, so we knew we would need to install some type of converter. And with there being several options on the market, we really wanted expert advice. So we hired an electrician who said he had several years of experience working on CNC machines. You know, he recommended that we hired a, uh, buy a digital phase converter. So the equipment was ordered, it was installed, and when he turned it on, all the fuses of the back machine completely blew out. Afterwards, he actually confessed he had never worked with phase converters before. So moving forward, we decided to fire him and we brought in a new electrician after that. Our timeline was set back several weeks, but we were in good hands. The new electrician took down everything that had been installed and we started with a black slate. Mm -hmm. Turns out we needed a rotary phase converter, not a digital mm -hmm. one. Rotary phase converters come in different sizes. My machine required a minimum of a 20 horsepower, but for only $1,500 difference, we upgraded to a 40 horsepower. Yeah, well worth the investment. So we could also add equipment as we grow. The entire process to get a three-phase electricity and purchase a power converter was just under $9,000, yeah. being about $5,109 for the rotary converter and $3,200 for the electrician and wiring material. Oh, don't forget about those $20 in new fuses we had to put in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so after the machine was finally under power, the bulk of our expenses was actually from having cost service techs come out. You know, the first visit was to set up the machine, and that included leveling, owner registration, and also just a kind of a general checkup of the machine. Now, thankfully, the fuses actually did their job and prevented catastrophic damage to the machine, you know, by actually just blowing up the fuses. Over the next couple of visits, we started diagnosing the programming issue. Mm -hmm. Remember, I could only hand code at this point in time, and it could not receive programs. So we tried a new RS-232 cable. Unfortunately, that didn't fix mm -hmm. it. We eventually took out the processor, MoCon, and video boards and shipped them to a repair shop in Georgia. All three boards needed slight repair and were tested on site before being shipped back to us. Mm -hmm. Our tech returned to install the boards, the parameters, the macros, and do a functions test. The programming issue was finally fixed. Oh, yes. <laughs> so the final cost to get all three boards replaced was four thousand seven hundred and forty-eight dollars, and then the labor—that <laughs> was uh, it was what four thousand nine hundred ninety dollars. It was just under five thousand dollars. So it's a pretty penny. It was a bulk of expenses, <laughs> but again, guys, this machine, comparable machine, would be over a hundred thousand dollars brand new. So this small investment into the the Haas tech coming out and the boards being replaced. It saved us a lot of money in the end for the capabilities that this big boy can really give us. Yeah, and it's it's already there. Mm -hmm. So, like as our shop grows and we get more orders and get production going, it has the ability to stay here, and I won't have to look for another machine. Yeah. So after we got the electricity, the machines under power, um, we go ahead and we fix the programming issue. The next thing we do in our shop is we're actually going to create dedicated stations. So we really love lean manufacturing. Everything has its place. Mm -hmm. So we created things like the reception area, a deburr table, inspection station, and even a shipping department, and also toolboxes to organize everything. Of course, you gotta have toolboxes. So we were, I was actually very thrifty with this part and got a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace and also discounted stores that you might see pop up on ads every now and then. So the cost for all these tables, toolboxes, and chairs and our desk and everything was only $1,100, which is a steal, guys. I mean, it's incredible. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Thrifty. <laughs> <laughs> the last bulk of expenses come from the inspection equipment, tooling, and work holdings. Mm -hmm. My godfather had been a machinist for over 30 years. After, unfortunately, he lost his battle with cancer, I inherited his machinist toolbox. It included a massive variety of things from new end mills, drills and taps, parallels, soft jaws, a vice, threaded rods, and nuts. Mm -hmm. I combined this with my own collection and inspection tools I started collecting while I was working in the industry as a machinist. Mm -hmm. Now I owned an 8 inch digital calipers, a uh, few test indicators with a magnetic base, and three sets of micrometers. But once we opened our shop we added a grade 8 inspection surface plate, height gauge, and also an edge finder for a total cost of $770. Now guys, inspection tools is the one thing we recommend always buying new. You don't really know how the last owner treated something if you're buying it used, and it's not worth scrapping hundreds of dollars on a job just to save some money on used 
inspection tools. Lastly, we bought one new vise in a 20 piece tool holder kit, which came to about $1,438. And we took advantage of a lot of sales throughout the year. Some sites actually have sales up to 60% off, which can stretch your budget amazingly. Yeah, especially when you need to load up tools in these machines mm -hmm. and it could be astronomical for a small shop getting those deals, man. That's where you where you make your money. So keep an eye out for that stuff. So should we do a final review of our expenses total? Let's do it. All right. All right. So far, it looks like we got uh, $125 for the LLC, mm -hmm. $30 for QuickBooks. For the website with the email addresses, $15. Mm -hmm. A year subscription of Fusion for $1,938. Gaming laptop being $700. Mm -hmm. For the machine, $10,000. Rigging and transportation, $5,500. A rotary phase converter, mm -hmm. $5,109. Electrician and material to install was $3,200. Mm -hmm. New fuses, of course. New fuses. <laughs> yeah, $20. $20. Repaired the Mocon video and processor boards, mm -hmm. $4,748. And also service tech to come out and do all that to install it mm -hmm. was four thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars and thirty eight cents mm -hmm. then the desk tables carts racks and chairs one thousand one hundred yeah. <laughs> and uh inspection tools being seven hundred and seventy dollars mm -hmm. like we said and the tool holder kit and vice one thousand four hundred and thirty eight dollars which comes to a grand total of let's see thirty nine thousand six hundred and eighty three dollars and thirty eight cents under forty thousand dollars to start yeah. our machine shop that's it's crazy. incredible so guys we love the manufacturing industry and we really hope our transparency is showing you what we spent and what areas in our machine shop can show you that the reality the dream of opening your own machine shop can be a reality you don't have to take on a massive amount of debt to do this and if this is a path you want to take start building your collection now as a machinist mm -hmm. look for sales invest into the quality tools and keep an eye on say facebook marketplace for oh, great yeah. deals definitely a lot of great deals on facebook marketplace oh, yeah. all right guys well did you start a machine shop and did you do anything differently than us we would love to hear about it in the comment section below yeah and also thank you for joining us for today's episode of becoming a practical machinist mm -hmm. as always please make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon thanks guys thanks for watching take it easy